Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm the king and welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year's. Today is actually the second because yesterday I was just so exhausted from the night before. But uh, welcome on in everybody. Dead by Daylight is celebrating the brand new year with a double blood point event. Now every single time this does come out, everybody wants to know what's the best way to maximize my blood points, how do I get the most points in my games, because let's be honest, everybody wants some blood points. So today I'm going to show you guys how to get the most blood points in your game, as well as showing you guys some gameplay to go along with this. Now there are two parts to this, the first part is pre-game, you need to prepare for the things that you're going to do in order to maximize the efficiency, and second, it's just all about your gameplay. So first of all, let's talk about survivor versus killer. Naturally, killer is always going to get more points when compared to the average that a survivor is going to get. You're going to have to play a really, really good game of survivor if you want to get a lot of points when compared to killer. It's just how it is because killers get points for literally doing everything and they get more points through deviousness. However, survivor, you need to do objectives, which, you know, once you're doing that thing, you can't fulfill the other categories such as altruism or things like that, or being chased by the killer. When you're playing killer, you're doing everything at once. You're chasing someone, you're hitting someone, you're slowing down the game and you're making gens not progress. So you're doing a bunch of things that help you Whereas Survivor, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. Now, if you do escape the match as well, you will get 5,000 extra points. If you don't, however, which most of the time you're more than likely to die, you won't get that much points. So the first honest advice that I have for you is play killer. If you're not comfortable with playing killer, that is completely fine. There's still methods on doing this with Survivor. And we're going to start off talking about Survivor. Now, the most efficient way to actually maximize your blood points is by using the perk We're Going to Live Forever. This is a teachable for David king so you need to unlock it on him before you can get it on any other characters essentially what this does if you take enough protection hits for in total you'll actually get a hundred percent more blood points to your overall score meaning whatever you get it will double if you get the max amount of tokens now it is a little bit difficult to get all of the tokens i will admit but it's still manageable and combining this with anything such as a bloody party streamer or an escape cake will also increase more of your blood points the rest is solely on your gameplay doing your objectives, stunning the killer, running away, and things like that. That's pretty much all there is to Survivor. Now, there are other perks that you could run that will increase your blood points. However, that only increases it in one category and caps it off. So I really don't recommend running those perks. People think it's really smart to do that, but in reality, not so much. On the flip side, we have the killers. Now, as I said in the beginning, killers get points so efficiently. It's really easy to get points as you're fulfilling every single category. It's the same way that you can do this with survivors. You have the perk barbecue and chili, which essentially is the same thing, but you just need to hook for survivors to get 100% more blood points. This is kind of a meta perk. You probably see it all the time and you probably have it. If you don't, probably have it. If you don't, it is a teachable for Leatherface. The only way you can unlock it is by buying him and then getting this perk as a teachable or in the shrine once you have barbecue and chili the same goes for killer bloody party streamers or puddings will help you get some more blood points this gives you a hundred percent more in all categories this will also give you a hundred percent more in all categories and then the double blood points will give you more as well so there's three days remaining I'm going to go ahead and jump on into a game now. I'm going to show you guys ways that you can play in order to get more blood points. Before I do that, however, there is one more thing. Picking a certain character won't essentially mean you'll get more blood points because it is reliant on your gameplay. The reason why you hear people saying play Doctor or play Legion is because these are killers that get deviousness points quite easy compared to someone like the Trapper who has a very difficult time getting deviousness points. So any killer that you're really good at, play them. Deviousness essentially is using their power, what is unique to every single killer. So for example, with the Wraith, you can clap the bell, hit someone, you'll get deviousness points. Now most of these killers get deviousness points quite easy. Some of them are a little bit more difficult, such as the Trapper, but the choice is ultimately yours. For this game, let's spice things up. Let's go with the Huntress. We haven't played Huntress pretty much ever. So uh, I'm just gonna play some Huntress and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm breaking down everything. As you see, I have barbecue and chili. And in addition to that, we're going to go ahead and run a survivor pudding. And let's see how much blood points we can get this game. So right now we have 5,000 and we'll calculate it at the end of this. Mm. Father Campbell's Chapel. I am not a fan of this map, but 
Hopefully it goes good. I got this new weapon, by the way. I haven't used it yet, so it looks really nice, I must admit. I didn't buy the other ones for her because I wasn't that much of a big fan. Like, they look sick, but I don't really see myself, so I don't know if that's something I want. Hello, everyone. Ah. Uh, I haven't played Huntress in quite a while, so you're gonna have to excuse some of my gameplay. <laughs> you're gonna have to excuse some of my gameplay. Now, the only downside to Huntress is that she is 110, and that can be a little bit bad when you're going to loops or tiles that survivors know quite well. Hi. <laughs> you see, that's what happens when you're not looking behind you. That's a, that's a common mistake people make. You have to look behind you to know where the killer is because you might panic with seeing the red stain and things like that and the killer can easily mind game you. So we got one stack of barbecue and chili right here. We're gonna go ahead and just reload our hatchets. Now another big thing that a lot of people seem to fail to do is playing with their food. Playing with your food will get you more points. So. Don't go full sweaty mode when you're playing. Don't run a Mori. Don't run eerie heads. Don't run anything like that. You need to prolong the game so you can get more points as the game goes on. If you cut your game short, you will eventually run out of points. And there is no way that didn't hit. That is... <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, prolong your game. Look at this, Jake. So look. I'm going to fully charge my hatchet. And when I hit him, I got precise shot. And I got 300 extra. Oh, hello. No, you're dead. I got 300 extra for uh, hitting him with a charge shot. So we're just going to reload now. Let's go put you on the hook. And yes, keep in mind, play with your food, as I said. No, no pun intended with the perk, but playing with your food is very efficient in getting points. Oh, there's a Nia here. Hi. Ooh, she didn't. She didn't go around smart. I'm, I'm getting back used to Huntress. I haven't played her in a while. So, oh, someone's right here, actually. I saw him run. Yep. Hi. Hi, David. Where are you going? Now, the good thing about Huntress that I absolutely love is that she has this pressure with her by just aiming her hatchet up. And essentially, what you can get people to do is to zone into areas that, you know, are dead zones or have nothing to them. Hi, Jake. You should be running away. I don't know what you're doing. Now, I'll admit, we're not playing the best, but these survivors are a little bit lackluster, so I will take it. I hope this guy doesn't have decisive. I don't mean to tunnel him, but he is on the floor, and if he does have it, might as well get it out the way now. Well, he does not have it, so we can go and put him on the hook now. More pressure if we get one person out of the game. Looks like someone's hurt, and they're running over here. I think this is Nia. We also have nurses calling, so if she decides to heal, we'll be able to see her. Hi, Nia. Oh. Wow! This <laughs> Yo, Huntress! Huntress isn't as, as good as I remembered. Huntress is not as good as I remembered. Her hitboxes are so finicky. It's weird because when you're playing against her, they work against you. And when you're playing as her, they work against you, so... So much for that. On the hook you go, Nia. All right, we can kill Jake and get this out the way. Remember to break pallets as well, because they do give you blood points as well. Ooh, someone saved Nia. Actually, wait right there, Jake. Kobe. Nah. <laughs> Alrighty, goodbye, Jake. I'm, I'm actually quite embarrassed. I'm playing Huntress really bad. Like, Queen Kuro and Lauren and all the other Huntress mains are going to be disappointed in me. Uh, Huntress is similar to Nurse in the sense that it's a lot of muscle memory. And if you can remember and predict well, you'll do really, really good. That's why you see some of the more dedicated Huntress mains always doing really good throughout their matches. If you don't play her in a while, you'll just be really, really rusty, as you can see by my gameplay here. I'm not really snapping on everything. Hi, David. I'm not really going to take any chances with this David, because he's been a little annoying. <laughs> Every time I go to hit him, he just runs into an area, and I, I just can't get him. So we're just going to... Kill him. There we go. I'm, I'm turning Mean Huntress on now. <laughs> mean Huntress on because there is only two gens left, and by the looks of it, they're probably going to pop another one. So we got four barbecue stacks. Someone's just chilling in the corner there for whatever reason. I don't know why, Nia, but... Oh, I think she realized as well that I, I figured it out. So as you see, by holding this here, I'm keeping her behind a rock, and now I essentially close all the distance, and I could literally just get a free hit on her. That is something that's really good with the Huntress that a lot of people underestimate. I'll just take a regular hit here, and now we'll try to cut her off over here. 
Hopefully someone goes to save the David. What a hit. And then we can just... Yoink! This is way too high. We'll just reload. So, slugging and, as I said, playing with your food will give you a little bit more blood points. If you're too... If you're too, too mean, it's it's not good because eventually you will... Boink. But yeah, if you're too mean, what's gonna happen is you're just not gonna get enough blood points. So this is the only downside to Huntress looping. And if you're smart about it, you can do little tricks like that, which forces the survivor to drop the pallet or make silly mistakes and then get it to work in your favor. We're gonna go and kick this gen as well. My Huntress skills are slowly coming back. Slowly but surely. Look at that Mia just chilling there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna scare her. Where's this David at? I know they were both over here somewhere. Hi, Maurice. Ah, there he is. Now they're both injured, which is good for us. Good for business. I'm making some really, really basic rookie mistakes with Huntress. Like, really basic mistakes with Huntress. And I'm quite sad about it, but hey. The good point about double what points is that you play a little bit more passive with things. Uh, are they healing in the basement? Oh. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, you play a little bit more passive with things. You're not too aggressive, and a lot of people want to farm. Farming is not a good idea, and I'll tell you why. Not only is it against the rules, but you're wasting so much time when farming. Because when we made the video of what's the most efficient way to get your currency, oh, they are. They're gonna be boned. Huntress has one of the best basement plays there is. You just literally hit, back up, hit again. And this guy's still in here too. Hit, back up, hit again. Huntress has one of the most devastating basement pressure, so... GG to them. But, as I was saying, you spend about like 15 to 20 minutes because everybody needs to get all of their blood points. Everyone is very selfish when it comes to that. And uh, what ends up happening is that the games just take too long and the efficiency is then thrown downward. So you'll get a perfect game but by the time it takes you to finish it, what ends up happening is that it's just the same as playing a normal game. So, there you go. We got ourselves a 4K. Now, we did do a couple of things wrong. It is very smart to go all the way to EGC. And with EGC, you actually get more points in sacrifice. Ooh, the hatch. Well, we can just lock that. Well, I don't think we're going to get the extra bonus blood points. But once endgame collapse happens like that and then you hook someone, you get extra points for late sacrifice, and that's another way that you can get some more blood points this game. I think this game we're gonna get about maybe 27 or 28,000 points, which is really, really nice with the extra offerings. Oh, we did get the late sacrifice, so we got 500 extra points for that, and now we're also going to get that 4K bonus, which is for killing every single person. So we should get a nice payout here. So we got Merciless Killer, that is a double pip. And let's see how much points we actually got that game. 29,708. These ranks were very peculiar. I don't know what's going on there, but that is a 30,000 game essentially rounded up. The most you can get is 32,000, so that's pretty damn good. And from that game alone, if you remember at the start, we were at 4,000 or 5,000. Now we have 120,000, and nobody else ran any offering, so there was no extra blood points. It was solely our survivor pudding. If people actually ran, like, bloody party streamers, which people tend to do, this number would go up even more. So essentially, in 10 games, you will get, or 9 games actually, you'll get a million blood points. So that is one of the most efficient ways to get to some easy blood points. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. As you see by this video, you don't need to play your best game to get a lot of blood points. Have fun with it. Enjoy the double blood points. Don't be too mean because you'll screw yourself out of your own points. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. As always, I'm the king. I tip my crown to you guys and we'll see you in the fog.